Hi there, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Cornish Cross Chicken. Everything you need to know about that breed and if it's the right one for your flock. Before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, make sure you subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breed. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So when you go to the grocery store or market, the chicken you find is most likely a Cornish Cross. This was the breed that revolutionized how people eat in the United States and many other countries. Chicken dinners used to be more of a special occasion meal. Once you developed this fast growing efficient cross, it made chicken meat cheaper and more accessible. So what is a Cornish Cross? Is it a breed? Are they suitable for a small farm or your backyard coop? Do they require special care? All these questions you may have or even concerns, we're going to answer them. But first, let's start with the origins of the Cornish Cross. The person credited with the start of the meat bird craze was a woman named Celia Steele from Delaware. While her husband was working for the Coast Guard, she decided to bring in a little extra money. Raising chickens for meat, the side project quickly blossomed into something bigger. And by 1926, she had to build a 10,000 birdhouse to raise them. As broilers became more popular, the Chicken of Tomorrow contest was started with support from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. People would send their broiler eggs to hatcheries where they would be hatched, raised, and raided based on their meat production and feed conversion efficacy. The winner in 1948 was a white Plymouth Rock bred by Henry Saglio from Connecticut. Another top broiler was a red Cornish cross from Vantress Hatchery, and eventually they merged them to form the predecessor of the modern Cornish cross. Now, I have to let you know that not all Cornish crosses are alike. There are different commercial strains of Cornish cross with other characteristics. The most common are the Cobb 500, the Ross 308, and Ross 708. All three are white feathered with yellow legs, but the Cobb 500 has a rounder appearance and sometimes has black flecks. The Cobb 500 and the Ross 308 are selected for their plentiful breast meat and often listed as jumbo corners cross. The Ross 708 has more of a balanced meat distribution instead of being somewhat breast heavy. They start growing more slowly, but they catch up with the other strains in later weeks. You may see these called the Cornish Rock. So Cornish Cross is for small farms. If you want to raise broilers for yourself or on a small scale, you may wonder how easy is it to find and buy these different strains? Luckily, some of the larger hatcheries out there sell them. You'll have to check which strain they sell. Not all of them have it listed on their website. If you want a bird that produces more breast meat, you'll need to find the Ross 308 or the Cobb 500. But if you prefer dark meat, you'll need to locate the Ross 708. Now let's talk about raising Cornish crosses. Once you've decided which strain you want and found your hatchery, you'll want to familiarize yourself with raising commercial broilers. These are not your typical backyard chickens and do have some differences. One of the reasons this breed's been popular is that they grow really fast. You'll need to process them around eight or nine weeks of age or 10 weeks at the latest. They were selected to get big fast, which means they get too large to be comfortable past a certain point. They will eat a lot if allowed and are known to develop leg and heart problems. The Cornish Cross doesn't forage like other chickens and would prefer to wait you to fill their feeders. They also drink a lot more than you'd expect, so be sure to offer them more water than you're used to. On top of their fast growth, ravenous appetite, incredible water consumption, they also poop a lot more than you might expect. Not only that, but their poop stinks. Meat birds need a higher protein diet, which result in astonishingly smelly droppings. Since they're so dirty and need a lot of feed and water, they require a great deal of of daily care but luckily you don't have to do it for long after a couple months they'll need to go to the processor and, and after that you'll have a well-stocked freezer for quite a while afterward now let's talk about the problems you already heard me mention that because they get big quickly, they get leg and heart problems. As mentioned before, is that they are also more labor intensive. They're better off having their feed somewhat restricted after a few weeks. So you'll need to adjust how long they have access or how much you give them at once. You can't just fill their feeders and let them eat to their hearts content because they will overdo it and the consequences can be fatal. They will also benefit from getting some exercise. So you might wanna consider them giving more space to walk than an enclosed chicken tractor or coop. This exercise can can help them stay more mobile and have more minor health issues as they're growing. You also have less time to decide how to have them process because they go grow so ridiculously fast. It's best to have everything planned out or prepared before buying the chicks. You'll have to make sure that you have a big enough freezer space for all those birds because they'll be big. If you raise 50 broilers, they'll certainly won't fit in the freezer side of your kitchen fridge. Corners cross chickens are also pretty terrible at free ranging. 
They are big, slow, clumsy, and not exceptionally bright. They're sitting ducks for any predator and you need to protect them from everything. On top of that, they're not particularly hardy either. They don't handle heat or cold, so you need to baby them. You also might be asking, are Cornish cross GMO? Genetically modified organisms are organisms that have had their DNA modifier change in a way that doesn't use breeding. That means Cornish crosses are not GMO. They haven't had DNA manipulated in a laboratory like fluorescent fish and mice or the phosphorus digesting in pig. Cornish cross chickens are created through selective breeding the same way that other breeds of animals are developed. While the actual formula is kept pretty secret, they weren't engineered in a laboratory and didn't have DNA from other organisms. So is the Cornish cross suitable for self-sufficient homesteads? If you're trying to plan out your homestead and want chickens that allow you to be self-sufficient, you probably shouldn't buy any Cornish cross. These birds are intended to be processed at a certain age and cannot be reliable for breeding. It's very labor intensive to keep them healthy long term, which is not in your best interest if you're busy running a homestead. Since Cornish crosses are crossbreed birds, they won't breed true. This means if you successfully keep some long enough and manage to get them to produce fertile eggs, you won't con get consistent birds. They'll still probably be more significant than your typical heritage breeds. Some will be on the larger side and some will be somewhat small. Cornish cross can be an excellent choice if you're okay with purchasing chicks regularly and just raising to stock your freezer. If you want a breed that can perpetuate itself and survive well, you should try to find heritage meat or a dual purpose breed. Now let's talk about some alternatives. Heritage breeds that can make decent meat birds outside of the Cornish cross are the Brahma, the Cochin, the Delaware, the Jersey Giant, New Hampshire Chicken, and Bard Rock. There are also some rare heritage meat birds out there like the Barbazi, the Bressy, and the Crevacore if you want something more interesting. Many large hatcheries and feed stores offer varieties of meat chickens. Some of these are crosses that are better suited for pastured poultry operations. Freedom Rangers are a bit slower growing than Cornish crosses, but also does better on the free ranging on the pasture. So to summarize, there's a lot to consider when you wanna raise chickens for meat, but the winner of the sheer meat production is the Cornish cross. They're fastest to grow and cheapest to feed, but they require some sp special considerations. If you want to raise broilers on the pasture, you might consider the slower growing breeds available since they are better adapted to that environment. Whichever direction you go in your meat bird operation, there is a fantastic option waiting. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.